In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take a look at using the Range Selection Tool as it's implemented in the most recent release of PowerDirector 365. They've changed the way it looks and the way it operates, but I think in the end you'll see that it's really easy to use. So let's look a little bit at how it works. You've noticed things have changed in the look of the range when I'm editing in 365. My playhead or timeline marker looks different. It's simply the straight up red line with the triangular element in the top. Now I can move it the same way I could before. I can simply take and drag it to put it to the frame I want to go in my project. Or I can click and it will move there. Or I can take my time code at the lower right of my preview screen, type in the appropriate number of minutes, seconds, and frames. Let's take three, for example, here, and then type in zero, press enter, and it moved exactly three seconds into my project. But what's missing from before is there were two markers on either side that allow you to set a range. They're gone. How do I use them now? The easy way to do that is simply highlight anything you want in your project. Let's take the second title on track three and press the X key on your keyboard. Immediately, my time markers now are visible and it will set them at default to the width of that element. I believe the reason for this is they assume a lot of times that's exactly what you want to do. You want to isolate an element and then analyze it in detail. To make it go away, there are two steps to do that. One is I can click on the X that now appears, or I'm going to put it back on. The other way is, is simply to press the Escape key on your keyboard. Either way will make the timeline range disappear. Now if I want to set a larger area, I can highlight more than one element and press the X key, and now I have a wider range. As before, you can take either element, the beginning or end of your range, and adjust it exactly where you want it to go. Now, one thing I recommend doing if you want to be precise is to use a timeline marker. So I'm going to move my playhead here, press M, set a marker, and move it here and press M, set another marker. Now, if I'm going to adjust my timeline range, it will automatically snap to either of my markers. So if that's what I'm looking for, now this is independent of where my playhead happens to be, I can set the range in and out markers by using the timeline marker to set it that way as well. So I'm not limited any more than I was before as to what kind of width I can have in terms of my range selection. Now, why would we use a range selection? Well, let's press Escape to make that go away and just click on this title again and press X. The range selection can be used for a couple of purposes. One is to examine that carefully. If I press Spacebar and I'm outside the range, it doesn't seem to matter. But if I'm inside the range when I press Spacebar, what will happen will be is it will loop within the range. You notice it snapped back to the beginning of the range. And so I can examine that carefully. You can also lock the range, but I don't think that part's implemented. I see it in the instructions. I don't see a way to do it yet in my PowerDirector 365. So I can examine it carefully and loop inside of a range. What else can I do with a range? I can copy, cut, remove, paste, or export. I think the remove is redundant. It's the same as cut as far as I can tell. I expect this to be changed in the future. But I can copy that range. So I have it selected. We'll click on Copy. And then I can go anywhere else I want to in my project. Let's simply go here and I can go Paste or I can do Control V. And there it pasted it, inserted it in my project. I'll do Control Z to undo. I, and so I think Cut and Remove right now effectively are the same. The other option I have is I can export that range. So I'll click on that. It will save it as a temporary project. It will ask me where I want to set it. Uh, I can put it right here in this place. This would be called Junk Zero. 
and then I can do export and it will export that project. It's rendering it right now. It's very short, doesn't take long. I can open the file location if I want to see where I put it. And if not, I click on the X in the upper right corner and it's exported that. Then I can import it into my project or a different project for another purpose. So that's one of the things that you can do with a range. And then to make it go away again, I'll press the escape key. We're back to regular editing. So that's a little bit about how ranges work, but more how to implement them in PowerDirector 365 now that you don't see those two little tick tools on the timeline marker anymore.